And let's give the Lord Jesus a wonderful round of applause. We're living in those times that seem like the times when Jesus was here on earth. We're learning the word with an access to it we've never had before. Today, God has shown so many things in us. The Bible is full of revelations, wonderful promises, which make us incredibly happy, full of great hope allowing us to believe in the Lord God and take hold of the blessing. And surely today, God wants to do something very important in our lives, and we will hear the word of the Lord. When it's revealed, we should listen carefully to it, and don't forget it. Because who reveals it to us is God himself. That's his voice for us. And what should we do? Give voice to the voice of God. In other words, to pronounce it and to make our assertions according to what he has revealed. When we constantly do that, we receive power and strength from God, and we start acting the same way Jesus acted. And many beautiful things God has done. Let's see a miracle that happened in one of my services. Roll this VT, will you? And you, my friend, what's your name? Ruth. Ruth, what has Jesus done? It's been nearly 30 years since I've had an accident and I walk like a robot. My legs wouldn't... Nearly 30 years? Nearly 30 years. How long have you been using this crutch? Oof, around 20 years. 20 years? And how did you walk? Hooch? Like this? Uh-huh. What about now? And now, thank God, even my back is straight. So straighten up and walk properly, Hooch. Our God is tremendous, my brother. What about it, Hooch? Thank God. Hallelujah. How was your back before? Like this. Well then, mimic when you were looking down with a curved back and walking slowly like before. My grandchildren would pull my legs saying I look like a piglet, always looking down. Like this, look. And now you'll say you're not a piglet anymore. What are you now? A daughter of a God. Daughter put of it God. over, over your shoulder. Oh no, I put it I don't need it anymore. Hooch, you walk away now looking up. Hooch, go on. Daughter of God. That's beautiful, isn't it, folks? Look, it's impossible. Against facts, there are no arguments. What God does when a person experiences it, Pooch is never going to forget Jesus and her family, her children and grandchildren, the ones who called her piglet. <laughs> no, Grandma, you look pretty now. And doesn't God want to do it for you? He surely does. You have to hear the word of God. Some people think miracles are like a pill you buy. The doctor prescribes it. You go there, it's here, it costs this much. Here it doesn't cost anything. You may come here all your life and never make an offering, not even to help paying the electricity bill or the expenses because we'll never, uh, we'll never embarrass you. And you never have to promise anything to God. What you should do is listen carefully to what God tells you. That's your father, that's your creator who is dealing with you, giving you the revelation. And when he says something, my brother, he will certainly fulfill it in the name of Jesus. You can be sure that God will bless you. Let's see Matthew chapter 16, because I've got a good revelation to give you here in the name of Jesus Christ. My friends, in Matthew 16, we've got here a case beginning in verse 21, in which Jesus was telling the disciples that he would go to Jerusalem. He would die, but in the third day he would resurrect. And then Peter decided to reprehend Jesus. Peter then said to Jesus, this will never happen to you. Look what Jesus answered him in chap verse 23, Matthew 16, 23. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Watch it, because the devil doesn't want us to experience the blessings of God. Here, he wanted to rob the salvation from us. He used Peter to make Jesus feel sorry for himself. That's true, isn't it? Why should I then go to Jerusalem to be killed? Well, let's pray to the Father and he will create another way. There was no other way. That was it. And Peter let himself be used by the devil. Sometimes it's the brother, it's the sister, it's the father, the mother, the boyfriend, the girlfriend, the friend, the boss, the employee, the doctor, or anybody else. When we feel that God is doing it, and oh no, it's not like that. It is exactly the way God said. 
And if you listen to them, you stop listening to God to listen to the devil. Satan will fill you with fear. He'll fill you with carnal desires, desire to be rich, greed, envy, and many other things, and you'll lose God's blessing. Whatever you feel when you read the Bible or when you hear the preaching that came from God, hold on to it. That's your fortune. Just believe in it. And even if it most definitely may seem very hard, keep on believing in it. Because if God said so, that's what he's already in action to fulfill in your life. And he wants to fulfill it. Jesus said, I'm going to Jerusalem. I'm going to be arrested. I'm going to be killed. But in the third day, I'll resuscitate. And the devil tried to use Peter, but Jesus was very smart. And so should we. I'll never accept this word because it doesn't come from God. And what doesn't come from God is grief for us. Let's see in Brasilia a person who was blessed. It's, it's a unique blessing. Roll for me this testimony in the name of Jesus. This was your cane? Yeah, this was my third leg. Your third leg. How long have you been using this third leg for? Mm, for four years and six months. How did you walk with, with the cane? Show us. I have had five strokes and a heart attack. Five strokes and a heart attack. How did you walk? Like this. Without it, you couldn't walk. No. So I trembled a lot. You did? And I fell. You fell. Now you don't tremble anymore. You even... I came up the steps without you did. it. So hold. Hold this here. Walk in the name of Jesus now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> go on, child of God. And a round of applause for Jesus, my dear. Now we'll go to Isaiah chapter 63. Isaiah chapter 63. Here the prophet wrote this 700 years before Jesus was born. He had many visions of the ministry of Jesus, that he would be born of a virgin, that he would take away our griefs and sorrows. And here he tells us about the battle Jesus fought in hell when he won Satan for us. He says this, he was describing a scene of a normal human war. Who is this who comes from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This one who is glorious in his apparel traveling in the greatness of his strengths. I who speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Here we have a description. But the Holy Bible is not a mere description. It's a personal message for us. It's saying, who is this who comes from Basra? From, from Eden, from Basra? Comparing him, him with the warriors from old times, with dyed garments, stained. This one who is glorious in his apparel. This is what I've been preaching to people. Jesus, Son of God, he was anointed with the Holy Spirit. And Peter wrote this because God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He gave Jesus an apparel. And that's why Jesus operated in a powerful way. Whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. Well, if he needed the anointment of the Holy Spirit and I don't need it, then I am superior to him. No, I am infinitely, infinitely, really infinitely indeed, completely infinitely inferior to him. But he came as a man, as you and me. So he needed this apparel of power. Here it says it is glorious. Uh, this one who is glorious in his apparel. The spiritual apparel Jesus had, the anointment that God gave him was glorious. That's why he did the work. Think about it. If I'm going to do the same work, if you'll do it, so our apparel is also glorious. We shouldn't be shy or now sheepish. No, but who am I? Well, I wasn't anything. I was a dirty sinner, but I accepted Jesus. I was sanctified by the Holy Spirit. I received now the faith of truth. Now I can do the works that he has already done. It was him who said that. But if I don't surrender to God, if I don't seek God, if I'm playing with faith, when I have a problem, I cry, I shout, I beg, and I'm not answered. But why? Because I don't have the glorious apparel. The Christian walk is done this way. We serve God. We seek. Serving God is not just going to church. It's not just hearing the word. It's opening up your heart. It's seeking God. Well, Dr. Schweitz, but my son is too young. My sister, when I was 20, I consecrated myself to Jesus. And I said, God, I don't want to fall. But when you're 20, you know, things are kind of spicy. Do you know what I did not to fall? 
I fasted twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and every day I prayed for about two hours. I sought God. That was the most beautiful period of my life when God used me powerfully. And I was working. I worked as a street market vendor. I worked as a lot of things in this life, but serving God. And where I went, the Lord God was with me. What I need to do today is to keep this glorious apparel. What every Christian needs is to keep, or if he doesn't have, to seek these God's revelations. This authority will empower you when you have to speak, speak like Jesus spoke, saying the word of God. When you have to pray, pray like he prayed. When you have to rebuke the evil like he rebuked Peter, get behind me, Satan. And rebuke was effective, like he cast out the legion of demons, come out of the man, and they had to come out. So who is this? This is who is fulfilling the will of God. Who are those of today who will have the same qualification? Those who are willing to fulfill the holy will of God, traveling in the greatness of his strength. My brother, the revelation that God gives you is really a great strength. It's a powerful strength. And it's with this strength that you will go against the enemy. Don't go shivering. The Bible says in, in Proverbs 28.1, that the child of God has to be bold as a lion. Boldness is lack of fear. No matter what is attacking you, if God has allowed it, he doesn't allow a temptation beyond of what we're able, but much below. And he'll also make the way of escape and will now resist. We'll go, go after it. And if you are not brave, you won't receive the blessing of the Lord. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent will take it by force. We must be stronger than the strong man because he is guarding what he's done, holding it. Nobody will take me away from here. So and so prayed, prayed and prayed and nothing happened. I will pray in the name of Jesus. I will cast out this evil and with this intrepidity, this courage. But if you are only a Christian in church who puts on an angel face when you're here, Outside, the enemy will attack you. We have to be a servant of Jesus 24 hours a day. And when the demon looks at us, who is this who comes traveling in the greatness of their strength? They will ask, it's the child of God. It's the one who went to International Grace of God Church in Sao Paulo. It's the one who watched the face show. It's the one who has learned their rights. It's the one who comes traveling in the greatness of their faith, in the greatness of their strength, in the greatness of their power to the victory in the name of Jesus. Let's continue here then. I, who speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Don't speak if it's not in righteousness. What is it to speak in righteousness? It's to speak according to what God speaks. Righteousness is the word of God. When I come to the demon and say, demon, you are coming out of my hand because I don't want you, go away. But you're crying, you're shouting, full of anger. Nothing happens. But when I speak in righteousness, in the name of Jesus, get your stuff because I am healed by Jesus' wounds. I am ordering, come out in the name of Jesus. I've got nothing anymore. We must learn these tips. This is not a mere description, no. Well, Isaiah and his revelation, and so what? What does it mean? A sick person doesn't want to know about a theater play of the past, but this is not a play. This was the truth. The person wants to know what God can do in their favor what God can execute in your favor, delivering you completely. Who is this who comes from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This one who is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I who speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Why is your apparel red and your garments like one who treads in the wine press? This is a question. I have trodden the wine press alone. Alone? You don't need anyone. If there's someone else, it's okay. But if there isn't, you can also tread the wine press because the enemy is already defeated. It's in the battlefield. Well, but I've got nobody with me. You've got Jesus. You've got the word of God. If you've heard and felt it from God, the fight is yours. There's nobody better to fight your battle than yourself because you know your own griefs. You know how much the enemy has attacked you. If you ask me to pray, I'll pray. 
and many times we agree upon it and God operates. But if you are about learning, you'll do the right prayer. You're no different from anybody, folks. He says here, I have trodden, trodden the winepress alone. Father, Father, I'm alone. Send somebody. No, he faced it. If God gave me this mission, I've got the power. I have trodden the winepress alone. And from the peoples, no one was with me. There was not a prophet with him, not a patriarch. He was by himself. For I have trodden them in my anger, in my capacity, which God gave me. In the authority I received from the Father, I used the power. For I have trodden them in my anger and trampled them in my fury. Over there in the Garden of Eden, when God asked Adam, Why have you sinned? Because the woman whom you gave me told me to eat this fruit. Why have you done this? Because the serpent deceived me. And God then cursed them and said, Serpent, I will put all of the enmity between you and the seed of the woman. Who is Jesus? You shall bruise his heel. He hurt Jesus at the cross, but he shall bruise your head. And he said, I've bruised it. All the power of hell was there. All demons clapping their hands. We've got him with us. We've defeated him. Now we'll do whatever we want. And he was marching in with dignity. And he was marching in when he got near the hellish authorities. There was this great battle. Let's say there were millions of demons there. Jimon was a good fighter. He threw one to the ground. He knocked the other one down. Nothing like that. The fight wasn't physical. Jesus started taking them from all their capacity. They were surprised. They didn't understand the word of God because demons don't understand the word of God because demons really don't understand the word of God. And suddenly they were a bunch of losers. And the Holy Bible says Jesus made a spectacle of them. He placed Satan in the front, and all demons followed him, chained and bound. And as it was in the past, the victorious kings took the defeated kings to their lands on the main street of, of the capital city, and people would stand on both sides celebrating, and the defeated kings were many times with their eyes put out, we are defeated, we were subdued, we lost the battle. And this was Satan's parade. He lost the battle. Today we have to tread our wine press. We must enter our battlefield. The demon has placed an infection in your intestines. That's your battlefield. He has then placed it in your head, in your arm, in your financial life, in your marriage. That's your battlefield. He says here, I have trodden the winepress alone. You go alone in the name of Jesus, you are authorized. Your apparel is glorious. And from the peoples, no one was with me, for I have trodden them in my anger and trampled them in my, my, my fury. Their blood is sprinkled upon my garments. This is symbolic because demons don't have blood. He's illustrating it as if it were a human battle for them to understand. And I have stained all my robes. Why have you done that? For the day of vengeance is in my heart. Jesus was just waiting for the payback day for the demon because he had created man to his image and his likeness. It was God's dream to have a being who had, who had fellowship with him for all eternity. But the devil came, he tempted man, man sinned, he deceived man, and then God waited for the day of vengeance. My brother, God is waiting for the day the sinner says, Lord, I receive Jesus as my savior. He comes with all his might. He takes this person from the kingdom of darkness and places them in the light. This person is a forever freed child. They just need to be taken care of like a baby. They'll grow in the faith, they'll get stronger, and they'll be a true blessing. And then he says the following in a very clear way. For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed has come. Let's stop in this word now. We're in the year of Jubilee of God, which God instituted. The year of the Jubilee happened every 50 years, seven weeks and seven years. The next year, the, 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 the Jew, the Jew who had bought a brother, another fellow man, a Hebrew, to be his slave because the man couldn't think straight and ran into debt and he was sold as a slave. So he then bought him and the man belonged to him. But in the year of Jubilee, that slave was freed. God created this year of Jubilee as a symbol of what he's done when Jesus died for us. The, the land was given to a family, but a foolish person ran into debt and sold part of it. He started working for someone else. In the year of Jubilee, who had bought it had to give it back. 
If the year of Jubilee was five years ahead, then they'd say, I have only five years of land. If it was in the first year after the Jubilee that the person had bought it, I still have 49 years to use this land. My family will use it. But when the year of Jubilee came, it was forbidden. Imagine if God did that in the modern world, right? It would start all over again. I mean, free the slave, return the land. Free the slave, Jesus says. This is what he's doing today. The year of the redeemed of Jesus is coming. It has come. We are in times of deliverance. Whoever is oppressed by any of the evil spirits, whoever is subdued by the spirit of poverty, madness, inebriation, of drugs, of sexual immortality, or any fault, they can cry out for freedom today. God, I want to be independent today. I don't want to belong to the enemy anymore. He entered the winepress and trod. Enter your winepress now. Wherever it is, it's a spiritual sense. Enter in the name of Jesus. Confess yourself to God. Ask God for this glorious apparel. And the time will come when you'll say, that's it. From now on, I'm in my right mind. From now on, I'm a good person. Glory to God. Let's watch now the real life drama segment for today. When he is eight years old, Reginaldo's mother dies, and he starts living on the streets. I started watching over cars, sleeping on park benches, bagging things to people. And there was a time in my life that I went three days and three nights without eating. Reginaldo is taken in by a man who gets him off the streets, but in return, he makes him start serving the spirits. Everything I lacked, he offered me. But you have to participate in our religion. You have to do this in the way I'll teach you. I'll consecrate you. I was raised in this until the spirits ask him to offer the life of a child. Without knowing it, he picks up a Christian girl. The spirit said, I cannot touch this child. She has the living God. I said, God? How come if God is in the, the witchcraft shrine and then the turbulence came because I touched the tree we shouldn't touch and the sorcery we used to do was not working anymore? This event upsets Reginaldo and brings back memories from his childhood. We had a neighbor. She lived near the witchcraft shrine and she'd tell me, boy, you're special. I'd sit by the fence and I'd listen to Dr. Suarez on TV. And that image stuck in my mind of that lady and of that girl. Time goes by and although he doesn't like children, Reginaldo meets Franciele, a mother of four, and he moves in with her. The financial problems only get worse. But those children finally grew on me. Then I lost my job. I did some odd jobs, but when you see those children smiling at you and you love them, then you look at the pantry and there's almost nothing. It was very hard. We fought a lot back then. It was all very troubled because he used to serve those things. Finally, Reginaldo finds a Bible on the street and takes it home. One day, he decides to end his own life, but one of the kids won't stop crying and he accidentally touches the book. Reginaldo is surprised. He accidentally touched the book, the Bible. It opened in Psalm 100 and he insisted and insisted that I took the book and I started reading it. Then he was quiet, but then I started crying. After that, he goes out and gets to one of the Grace of God churches. The first time that he came to church, he was looking very disturbed. We had a prayer that very day. I went out of the church door. I saw a different world. I started knowing the word I started surrendering myself to it. I saw that God was not dead. He was very much alive. Five months, it took me to convert and to be baptized. Everything changed. Today, we look at him and we see peace. He turned into a calmer and more understanding person. It changed the way I talk, the way I behave with other people. I was unemployed. I was hired as a cutter. I moved in this country house with my wife and we got married. I didn't even have a bicycle. Today I've got a car, a little horse, a small car to go for a ride with my family. Today I'm not an employee. I'm an employer. I'm a tither. I make offers. I am a sponsor, right? And when I started to sponsor, that's when I opened a small business, a painting company, um, you know? Today we live in peace in this house. We've got a car to go to church and God is blessing us every day. God has delivered me. God made me be born again in his presence. 
God is everything in my life. He is my heir, he is my life. I'm free, thank God. Today I live, the life I had was nothing. Today he preaches, he speaks of the love of Christ. What was poverty, now is wealth in his life. Eight children, thank the Lord, and God has honored me. We have everything. Without God, it's impossible. We are here under the blessing of the Lord Jesus in my paradise with Jesus. Glory to God. <laughs> hey, Reginaldo, are you going to fill up the world, Reginaldo? Well, maybe. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Suarez, it's a blessing of God. <laughs> For someone who had no love, I had no... Uh, it was the old creation, right? And you almost offered an innocent to God, right, to the yeah. devil, I mean. It was the enemy, that's true, Dr. Suarez. It's because there, at that moment, I was doing an offering, right? A delivery, they call it, right? And then the entity said, I don't want any of this. Well, but it's all there for the sorcery to work, you know? Because it was like this in the sorcery. We took it away from one person and cast it over the other one. Yeah. Actually, we did nothing. It was all a hoax, right? And then he said, no, I want a child. I said, a child? Okay then, because he okay, was... Okay, it's very shocking. Let's change the subject. Has Reginaldo changed? Amen. Let me talk to your wife. <laughs> so this man wants to overpopulate the world with his kids. Now we won't have any more kids. The heavy load is for you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. And is it good to be with Reginaldo today, my sister? It is good. Is, is he a good husband? He is, thank God. Okay, a round of applause for Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, my brother, let's go to the question and answer, shall we? Dr. Suarez, is everybody born a child of God or just the ones who serve him? No. We are born creations of God. Everybody comes from God. But to have the quality of a child, because with Adam, Adam, we lost that. The person must believe in what Jesus has done. And when they believe in it and they accept Jesus as their Savior, they receive the right to become children of God. This is in John 1, 12. But as many as those who received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. Let me pray for those who are at home. Father, I pray for those who are at home. And God, I want to give them the blessing now. And I'll do that in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I freeze all action of the evil one. And I say, evil, get out of this life. Go away in the name of Jesus.